Catherine Walters here and welcome back to my channel. Viking wire knitting is a versatile wire working technique and if you've been working your way through some of my videos by now you know you can create a beautiful chain using that wire technique. However that's not the only thing you can do with it. Today I want to show you how you can use Viking wire knitting to make a pendant and specifically how to knit inside a pendant frame. So there will be two steps to this video or this video tutorial. Part one will focus on making the frame and part two will focus on filling the frame with wire knitting. I hope you'll join me. Catherine Walters from The Knitted Raven back again. And in the last um, video, we made this pendant frame. Today we're going to fill this pendant frame with uh, wire knitting. So I've gone ahead and cleaned a wingspan, which in my case I think is about, I guess, five feet and a bit of 26 gauge wire in one continuous piece. Um, and yes, it is dangling on the floor right now. Um, I'm not exactly sure how much wire we're going to need for this frame. So I'm starting with, with uh, a length of wire that um, is recognizable to me. In other words, I know what my wingspan is. And um, at the end, I'll measure what I have left, and that will give me a better indication the next time around of how much wire I need to cut. To start your um, wire knitting, you want to make a 90 degree bend with about, oh, I guess that's about an inch and a half at the end of the wire. And you want to seat that up where the, uh, the twists are, and you pull that down and you just give that a couple of twirls around there. You're not going to secure that till afterwards. We will eventually be doing some nice neat wraps here, but we have to get our first row of knitting established first in order to do that. And we need this wire anchored here in order to have leverage to actually do the knitting. You'll see what I mean in a minute. And that is my dog announcing herself to the universe. We have a beagle. She was a very scared beagle when we first got her, and she didn't have a voice. As you can see, she's over that. <laughs> okay, so as you can tell, I've got the first stitch done there, and all that it is is I go around. The wire is in front of the pendant frame, and I take the end and I go behind the pendant frame. And what that does is that creates a loop. And then I pull the loop down. You'll notice I'm pulling first to the left and then I pull to the right. And the reason for that is if you pull, only pull from the left, if you are sorry, only pull to the right right away, you will end up skewing all the um, stitches. They'll all have a slant to them right from the get go. And that's not what you want. All right, so that's two stitches. We're gonna do it again. I grab the end of my wire, I come up behind the frame, like this. Working the wire to get all the kinks out as I go along, and I brace the previous stitch with my fingers before I start to pull it in. And the reason for that is I don't want to make that stitch too small. Now, one thing you want to consider when casting stitches onto a pendant frame is you want to end up with an even number of stitches. Um, it looks more attractive than if you end up with an odd number. And the last stitch in the first row will wrap around the um, where you started way back there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It would be nice to kind of put six stitches here on one half and then six stitches up the other side. So that's what we're going to do. Pulling to one side and pulling to the other. You'll notice I'm using my tapestry needle to do a little bit of tweaking along the way and that's good. You want these to be as evenly spaced as possible. 
Now, if you have a bend in your wire like this, you can go in with your fingers and give it a little curve to help it out. Sometimes it helps if you need to even things out to lay it on your beading mat and just give it a rub with the edge of your tapestry needle. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. I think I'm going to need more than six stitches. So I'm going to aim for eight. Let's see what happens here now. This is the sixth stitch. Oops. Wire is a tad springy. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I gently push those back because I need to put eight in there. So that means there's going to be 16 stitches on this by the time that we're done. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Push that everything back just a titch. You can use the sharp point of your um, tapestry needle to uh, reseat your stitches if you need to. I actually need to fit one more in there. And that's going to be a little bit interesting. So I'm going to go back up to the top and I'm going to tighten up that first stitch just a titch. And come down. There we go. Alrighty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that is my eighth stitch. How about that? So that's eight stitches. And yes, it pays to count because you can cut up in the knitting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now I'm going to continue on and I will pause this video. And when I'm finished and up to here and ready to join, I'll be right back. Okay. Hi there, we're back again. Now I've got 15 stitches here and number 16 is where the two rows connect. So I wanted to show you how that works. This time you bring the end of your wire through the gap right here. And then you basically you're wrapping it around the beginning of your first stitch. This is the tricky part because you don't want to distort this too much. You also don't want it to be too big. Get that tail out of the way. Okay. That's my 16th stitch right there. From here on in, we are going in around our previous stitch. Now I want to show you something. This is something that I learned to do fairly quickly. Is that it helps if you can do that. If you can curve it in around and notice I'm pulling to the left and now when I get up to this this spot I'm pulling and I'll take my needle now and I'll reseat my previous stitch because you've probably distorted it by pulling. But there you go. Now we're going to do that again. Sometimes it's not easy to curl and wrap around, so I just go through a little bit and then I come up on the other side of that stitch and now I've got this. So again, pull to the left. Of course, if you're doing this as a left-handed person, you are going in the other direction. Um, 
your work is going in the other direction and you would pull to the right first. Now, before I finish that, I go back, I pull that down, give that a little tweak, give it a little pinch with the fingers, and now I'm ready to do the next stitch. Show you one more time. In on one side of the previous stitch, and I come out on the other side. And then supporting the frame. Oops. That hooked around the edge of the table. And spraying. Well, I do believe I have a kink in my wire. So deal with that first. And go back in and finish your stitch. And this time, because of the wild bit of uh, yanking I just had, I wanted to fix that with the tapestry needle ahead of time. And this is a bit of an awkward position. I've got the camera just above here. But I normally hold my work in the left hand and do the knitting with the right. And every once in a while when I want to straighten out my stitches or tweak them with the tapestry needle, I will lay my work back down then on my bead mat to do that. And then I give it a little pinch. So you can see we've got the first first few stitches knit. Now I'm going to turn the off the camera again and I'm going to go all the way around to the top because I want to show you um, how to do that. Remember you Go around one, one side of the stitch, you come out the other side, you pull to the left first if you're knitting in the same direction as I am, and then you pull it across to the right. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Okay, we're back again. We're back to the top again now, having finished our first full round of knitting after the cast on. Now we're going to uh, end this row to begin the next one. And once again, this time I'm going down in between the first and second lines of wire there and I'm coming out on the other side because once again it's all about wrapping it around that stitch and you can see this once again I go back in with my tapestry needle and I reseat my previous stitch because I've kind of made it look a little bit wonky and now I'm ready to carry on So I want you to um, I want you to continue knitting around until you are just about out of wire and near the top again. So I'd say do another two rows, um, and uh, that should be enough for the first pendant. Back in a bit. Okay, and we're back. Um, my wingspan of wire let me do um, four rows beyond the cast on. So if your arms aren't as long as mine, don't be alarmed if you ended up with one uh, less row of knitting. That's just fine. The trick um, uh, to making sure that your knitting lies flat is to don't knit until there's no space left between the stitches because each time you are uh, making a stitch, you go in through here, for example, and then you come out here. And if these two stitches here are too close, you won't have enough room to do that. And that can be most aggravating. So the first thing I'm going to do, since I don't need all this wire to finish this off, is I'm going to cut my end off and lay it to one side. Now I'm going to make one last stitch. I go in through the right side and I come out through the left side. Pulling first to the left and then to the right. And I go back, of course, with my tapestry needle to seat my previous last stitch. Now all I have left to do is to secure this end of wire and to go back and secure that end of wire. And how I do it is I make that last stitch and I'm going to, I put the wire back through the big hole in the middle, smoothing it out as I go, and I'm going to come up on the right side of the last stitch that I made. And I'm going to pull that wire in. Now, take your tapestry needle, put it through the loop you're making, and hold it on the back of your work. 
and that will let you wrap fairly tightly without crimping your wire. And now you're going to do it again. You pull through. You come up next to the other, the last loop that you made. I usually bring it in around my finger first. I put my needle, tapestry needle back there, and then I pull snugly. And then I give it a little tug beyond that. And I'm going to do it one more time. You will have noticed by now that your wire has gotten a lot harder to manipulate because all that knitting and pulling on it has work hardened it over time. So you're not doing anything wrong. Again, put the tapestry needle through your, your uh, loop that you've made on the back. Pull it snugly against it. Then remove it and pull it forward one more time. Now, I'm going to bring this up close so you can see. I have secured that between the, the last stitch that I made and the first stitch of the last row. Now this is where it helps to have smaller cutters because I'm going to go in now and snip that off. Hmm, I have chained those pliers here somewhere. Let's see. Here we go. Yeah. I'm going to go in and I want to tuck that in and I want to wrap it tight. So you may need to come at this from a couple of different angles because that wire is really fine. You'll know you've got it right when you move your fingers over it and you don't feel any sharp bits. And you can go back in like this if you want to, or actually I often use my fingernail just to slide it over a titch. Now we have this little guy from the beginning. Now what I do with this is I pull it out straight and I come up behind. So I come right out the other side of the pendant bale. And I pull that in and I give it a wrap. You're going to need your uh, chain those pliers to finish this off though because it's a short length of wire. Oops. And pushing that up against my finger. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna go for wrap number three. And again, coming in here and giving it one last snip. Make sure you don't cut through your knitting because that would be tragic at this point. And again, you make sure that your ends are pressed down. And there's your first pendant. Remember, as you're knitting, you're wrapping a loop around a loop. That's all knitting it actually is. First you pull to the left, and then you pull to the right to finish the stitch, and then you use your tapestry needle to go into the stitch before if you have to push it back into shape. And that will help your lines of knitting um, be more straight, and it will give it a more pleasing effect. I call this style of pendant a Mandela style of pendant because it has the uh, the spokes of the knitting, so to speak, um, emanating from the center. I'm quite fond of this pendant design and have done a number of different riffs on it over the years. This pendant is about one and a half inches in diameter. If I was going to make anything bigger, I would use 14 gauge wire for the frame instead of the 16 that we used here. Um, for smaller pendants, I would go down to a 28 gauge wire, which is finer than this for the knitting on the inside. Um, just because you don't have as much space to work in, say, a pendant that size. Anyway, all you have left to do now is to decide how you want to hang this. If you want to put it on a chain or if you want to use leather. If you want to use a purchase clasp or a clasp you've made yourself. There are videos uh, in the... Uh, Wire Working 101 playlist to help you out with that. And there will be a video in future on using liver of sulfur to darken and finish wire knitting. I like to use that because it really makes the stitching stand out. But anyway, you have now just made your first uh, Viking wire knit pendant. Congratulations. Thanks so much for joining me here today. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. 
And if you haven't considered subscribing to my channel, please do. Hope to see you again next time. Stay well. Be safe. Bye-bye.